Employers of Reddit, what is the most disturbing thing you've discovered performing a background check on candidates? I interviewed a bunch of CSS college seniors to become software development interns at a company I was a software development manager at. The plan was to hire interns for 20-ish hours a week, judge how good their skill was, and hire some most all of them when they graduated. In about 4-5 months, I ended up hiring 8 interns, of which 5 or 6 we ended up converting to full time after graduation. One guy I interviewed was older than the rest, about 26 when the rest were 21-23. He was super personable and did reasonably well on my development skills test. He sold himself really well and I was very enthusiastic about the interview and planned to offer him one of the positions. He pulled me aside after the interview and said he wanted to tell me something. It turns out he had spent 3 years in jail for dealing drugs. He further explained that he had been doing community service and court mandated counseling for over 2 years and produced from his backpack a literal mountain of paperwork proving it. I told him I would consult HR. HR actually said they were fine with it. Still not sure how this happened. I brought the guy on and holy crap did he want to prove himself. He kicked all kinds of ass every moment he was there. While he wasn't the most skilled of the interns we brought on, he was probably third in talent. He spent every waking moment learning, listening and getting better as a developer. We converted him to employee the moment he graduated, and for the next year until the office closed down. Project ended. That dude probably averaged 80 hour weeks. He's now been working as a dev in a small startup for about 5 years. I still keep in touch. Great dude who just made a series of stupid mistakes when he was young. I was working at a family fun center as the accountant. I did all the payroll and was listed at the contact person with the state for any employee questions. I get a call that went something like this. Ted hi, my name is Ted and I'm calling to see if you employ Sally, me yes, she just started here last week, T I'm Sally's parole officer, I wanted to check and see if she will be dealing with any children at her work, me yes, this is a family fun center that is full of kids, is there a problem, T A, you need to send her home right now, she is not allowed to work anywhere with kids. Did you do a background check on her? Me I'll check with HR but we normally do run a background check. T.I. will contact her, but please send her home and do not let her return. Me okay. Thank you. End of convo. I do a quick google search and pull up her police record. Turns out she and her boyfriend had a kid together but were both addicted to drugs. To get the baby to stop crying they would put a bag over the baby's head and make it pass out. One night they left it over the baby's head too long and it stopped breathing. She did a few years in jail and had just recently been paroled I lost it on our HR person because I found out he had stopped submitting background checks to the company we used even though we were still paying them the monthly fee. We hired a baby killer to work with kids at a family fun center. Guy had a felony assault charge. Not disturbing in itself but found out later it was from beating his previous boss face in after being confronted about coming in late to work repeatedly. The boss survived but apparently had to have his face reconstructed. So yeah, hard pass on that one. Hope you told him nope over the phone. I did a background check for one guy, and I found out that he had lied about every single job that he had. Going one job back. He claimed that he was a manager at a shoe store that went out of business. I was unable to verify that, because the shoe store went out of business. Then he said that he was in the military for 4 years as a communication specialist. I found that he was in the army for 3 months, but got an honorable discharge because he couldn't make it through boot camp. He claimed before that he was the manager of the evening shift at a chicken plant. Turns out that he was a janitor for only a few months before he was fired for job performance. He claimed he was a manager of a hotel before that, and it turned out that his mother was actually the night manager, and she was fired because she kept bringing her kid to work. I tried to do the math, and I realized that if everything in the background check was true, that the applicant probably also lied about his age, and had to be a lot younger than he claimed to be. He said he was in his late 20s, but I bet he was no older than 20 or 21. Guy applied for a driver position with one of our senior care affiliates, take elderly people on errands and to appointments, deliver meals, take clients to the center where they can hang out, etc. Not one, not two, but ten counts of elder abuse, with a side of attempted murder and theft, rescinded that offer real dang quick. 
I called an applicant's reference and his former employer said, I'm not allowed to comment on former employee performance. I can only confirm their start and end dates. But, why don't you ask me about the weather? I said okay how is the weather there? He replied, the clouds are moving lazily across the sky and they are really dumb. I found out later that he stole this from a Dilbert cartoon, but he really did say it. Man applying for a job as a construction estimator. He owned a construction company and was convicted of defrauding various city and county governments. Pretty much the last person you'd want doing estimates. I was part of a group interview for a director position. The guy was cool, definitely qualified and was breezing through the interview. Pretty funny too. I thought for sure he was in. We get to the end and HR is telling him about the process after if they were to offer him the position and once they mention the background check he quickly responds that he wouldn't pass it. We all sit there in silence for a second and he calmly says that he was charged with 3 counts of felony armed robbery so likely wouldn't pass. Not as bad as some to these, but I run a lot of background checks at my job. It was a bit darkly humorous when we were filling a position at a rehab facility, only to have like 6 finalist candidates in a row screen out with recent drug charges. When we were hiring contractors I would google their names and phone numbers to see what I could find on them. One of the guys that applied was recently in jail for a few years for endangering the welfare of a child. The article stated that the police showed up at the home of him and his girlfriend to serve a warrant. Upon entering the home they saw that the entire place was swimming with raw sewage. There were dirty needles scattered everywhere. When they checked the back bedroom they found two naked toddlers on moldy mattress that were surrounded by raw sewage. It made me physically ill to read. Needless to say, we did not hire him. I also found a dong pic he posted with his phone number saying text me for more pics. Used to work in banking. Every employee was background checked, state and federal, and had their credit bureau reports run as well. We were never allowed to bring anyone on until all of their background checks had been approved, and that always took a minimum of 3 business days, sometimes as long as a week. One of the branches I was responsible for at the time broke the rule and hired a new teller and allowed him to start right away. They were extremely understaffed and had been for a while. He'd been there for a couple days. No problems. It was just after closing on a Friday when I got a call from HR. The new teller was a do not hire for felony. Crap. Out of curiosity. I asked what he was convicted of. Multiple R. I called the branch manager. The one who hired him. And she got very quiet and whispered to me that she broke the rules. Let him start working already. That he was there right now helping her close the branch and that they were the only two people there. Bear in mind. The manager was a very attractive. Petite, like maybe 110 pound, woman in her late 20s. The teller, I later learned, was about the same age and built like a pro linebacker. She was terrified. So she stayed on the phone with me while I called corporate security on the other line. They got there very quickly, escorted her to her car and him out the door. No idea what happened to him, but I had to write her up and senior management were seriously mad. I simply googled a candidate's name and the search returned US Marshals Fugitive of the Week. It was the same guy. My first job as a manager and I'm interviewing for a tech position. Had some good candidates. Then my boss says he has someone I should talk to. The guy was in his mid to late 50s and his sole tech experience was a 4 month tech class. He was singularly unqualified, but a nice guy. Then my boss says we're hiring him, and shuts down my questions with I'm the boss, this is happening, make it work, which I do. The guy was a quick study, hard worker, and didn't seem to mind working for a youngling like me. After a year or so he and I are pulling an all nighter and beasting about stuff, and he tells me his story. He had been a Mississippi River boat pilot for decades, but in a barroom brawl had killed a guy with his bare hands. He'd served 15 years in prison, sobered up, and was looking for a job type job. I never had a problem with him, but it made our relationship feel exponentially more bizarre to me than it already was since I was essentially already mentoring a guy 30 years my senior who turned out to be a barehanded, riverboat piloting killer. I was working at a pretty remote site up in northern Alberta and the RCMP showed up. Turns out one of the welders was one of the most wanted men in Canada, and was hiding up there for some ridiculous amount of time. 
He apparently murdered a gas station clerk in a botched robbery. This is why you should do background checks. We interviewed a young guy for a position, and I did the basic check with his former employers once they were shortlisted for the final interviews. All came in fine except one, where they asked to have a phone conversation about the candidate. I got a call from them wherein they explained that he'd actually been fired for repeatedly posting photos to the company Instagram and Twitter which contained hidden items that weren't meant to be in there. I pushed and pushed to find out exactly what they meant. And it turns out this person we were interviewing to manage our social media had been posting photos with his genitals hidden in the photos for months before his bosses had noticed. It's like where's Waldo? Only where's Willy? We had a guy include a shirtless flexing portrait on his resume. He was applying for an engineering position. We still have no idea what that was for. Probably showing you his body at work. We did a background check on a guy who it turns out had sued every former employer for an on-the-job injury, usually right after 90 days, when most trial periods end. I did not hire him, but somebody else did, and I warned them that the background check showed at the 90-day mark, he would try and get injured on the job and sue them. They took that to heart, and on the 92nd day, he showed up to work with a lawyer claiming that his office chair had hurt his back, that the lights above his cubicle were giving him migraines, and his monitor was making his eyes hurt. The company responded prepared with their own lawyers, gave him an ergonomic keyboard, a monitor filter, and a special little area where the lights were better, and an ergonomic chair, and then they made it known that they would be contacting his former employers, many of whom he had sued saying he was unable to work anymore. He stopped complaining, and was let go in the next round of layoffs. Years ago, I was hiring for a large call center project. We were using a background check vendor which provided instant results. We did it on the spot when an offer was made so we could just go ahead and knock out the new hire paperwork. The result came back that the guy sitting in front of me was supposed to be sitting in jail at that moment. The punchline, it turned out that the guy sitting in front of me was not the real perp. His uncle had stolen his identity and had no id on him when he was arrested. He was close enough in age to his nephew that he could pass just by giving the nephew's name, birth date, and SSN. Neither had been in the system before this. A fingerprint check eventually cleared things up. Keep in mind, this was about 10-11 years ago. It would be harder for this to happen today. His profile picture on Facebook was an upside down male genitalia. I assume it was his. Using the dong as a nose, he had cleverly balanced a pair of eyeglasses over the genitals and drawn pupils on the testicles to create the image of a gentleman elephant wearing a pair of glasses. He got an interview, got the job and developed into one of my best technical analysts. My wife interviewed a candidate for a manufacturing job. She proceeded with background check and the FBI showed up within 20 minutes of her search. Wanted her to pretend to hire him and have the dude come and so they could arrest him. She said, no no no, I do background checks so we don't have a shootout in the parking lot. FBI arrest guy that afternoon at the address he put on his application. FBI could not tell my wife what the guy did, only that he was extremely dangerous and wanted under a closed eyes only file. It was the first time I'd ever done all of the interview process myself where I worked. One man came in, said everything I wanted to hear, mentioned enthusiastically how he had worked with my boss beforehand also, so I phoned my boss to ask about him. He had been fired only a few months previous for aggression in the workplace towards the public and must have thought my boss had just forgotten. I used to work for a company that ran CV background credit checks for finance firms. These are some of the more interesting happenings. The phone number for a woman's previous employer was not for an office like she claimed but rather a mental hospital in her home country. A man with an undisclosed directorship and business bankruptcy, not good as he was applying for a very senior role. A woman who was fired from more than one job for turning up drunk. Not a formal background check, just a google search. Turns out the guy had dated the granddaughter of a book collector. The collector died and a few days later his home was broken into and a cache of rare books was stolen. Within a short period of time the guy was trying to sell these rare books to other collectors. The collectors quickly figured out what was going on and banded together to flood the internet with warnings not to buy from him and updates on their attempts to get law enforcement involved. 
Further digging by them revealed he was on a S offender list for child abuse and had recently served prison time for same. The guy was very charismatic and I had been ready to offer him a job. On his application he had said his last job, which covered the years he was in prison, was running a pizza parlor in Indonesia. I worked at a gym where after a few months a personal trainer was let go after things weren't working out very well for her. The gym supposedly did background checks before hiring employees. But after she was let go another employee found a news segment from a local news station that aired the previous year that mentioned this girl. Turns out she was arrested for following UPS trucks around Christmas time and stealing packages off people's front porches just months before she was hired. This wasn't just like a quick mention, either. It was a full blown news segment that flashed her picture across the screen and included video footage from someone's home security camera catching her running up to the front porch grabbing a package, and running back to her car. This obviously spread quickly around the gym staff, and she was referred to as the Grinch in any conversations where she came up. In order from least crazy to most. 1. Candidate is open about having prior arrests for minor theft some years ago. We get it. People make mistakes. We can overlook old stuff. Candidate arrives to interview and signs consent form for background check, which we run during interviews. Right after the candidate leaves, the results come back and we learn they were arrested two months prior for grand theft, and have a theft related charge roughly twice per year, for the last 10 years. Didn't hire. 2. Candidate calls before scheduled time and says they will be late as they are having car troubles. Okay, I have an open slot later in the day, and I move them there. Interview time comes and goes without further contact, so I assume they are not going to show. As I go to leave that afternoon, the receptionist stops me and asks, Hey, was, first name, last name, going to interview today? Yeah, why? They were just arrested for stealing a car with a toddler in it. Apparently the candidate was going to steal a car to get to the interview. 3. Additional info. We only run a statewide check initially, and after 30 days we run the national level check. So, this candidate shows up, great interview, clean record, in state, etc. We hire them, they complete training and are doing a great job overall. After 30 days, we run the national background check and get 3 national hits, all for active warrants for murder manslaughter. Frick, we called the police, employee never showed up again. And we never heard anything else. Applicant drug test, tested not of human origin. Some people get their dog to pee for them and positive for THC, marijuana. I had a candidate that was going for an IT related role in a hospital. He knew a background check was required, of course never mentioned he was arrested because his home exploded due to the result of a lab. How he didn't think that would show up is beyond me. Mandatory not me but my mom. She used to work for Corrections Canada going over the meal plans and also helping inmates learn cooking skills while in prison to help them potentially get a job when they are released. She normally doesn't look at what the inmate had done to end up in prison, but one guy's letter made her curious. He was applying to get into some cooking classes and mentioned in his letter quite a few times about how he's a great and hard worker, aside from his family problems. So she got curious and googled him. Yeah, dude killed his wife and daughters. Family problems. You have been visited by the sniper Kitter. Good aim and also accuracy will come your way if you comment snipe well. Kitter. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.